creating parametric part models in Inventor, the overall process is pretty flexible. With this flexibility, it allows you to concentrate on your design intent and your actual design instead of being limited by how you're going to model it. The process where you go through creating a sketch, constraining the sketch, and then using part features to modify and enhance your design allows you to create a very flexible and usable model. With parametric modeling, the best way to model is to think about building blocks. What's the most likely way to create what I'm trying to create? So if we take this lock shackle from the padlock we seen earlier, the most sensible thing to think about is what shape is this? It's a big hook. It's a piece of wire. It's a piece of metal bent. So the best shape to start with is the big U shape that creates that lock shackle. You wouldn't start out by creating the notches or ribs in the bottom of it, fillets or anything like that. We create the overall shape. Whenever we determine that shape, we decide that that's a critical aspect of that part. So that makes it go in order of importance being the first thing that we create. So let's try to create a sample model just to give us something to work with. So follow along, go up to New, Standard Templates, and choose the standard IPT. Select Create. And let's create our own little part here. First thing we need to do is create a new sketch. Everything in Inventor is based on a sketch. You can just select a plane. And let's select rectangle. If you hit the little down arrow there, you can say center point rectangle. And I'm going to select my center point being the center of my model there. And just like AutoCAD, you can take and add dimensions to objects as you create them. So if I know that this is going to be 6 by 4, for example, escape to finish, double click my mouse wheel and it'll zoom all the way out for me. And I say finish. Double click my mouse wheel again, now I can see my whole part. I say extrude. Extrude dialog box pops up. Yours may even pop up pre-rolled up. If not, you can roll it up by clicking on this little black arrow here and get it out of our way. We can add a dimension to it. We can decide which direction it's going to go. Some real simple features here. We'll just go up 0.75. Finish. Then we'll create a secondary feature. Click 2D Sketch again. Click on the top. Create another rectangle here. And we can dimension this rectangle. Click on the dimension command. So it's going to be four. And you can see that it's a perfectly square dimension, so it's only allowing me to add one dimension to it. And I locked the corner of it to the center of this rectangle. So therefore, it is offset, off center, on purpose. So I say finish. Say extrude. Select my rectangle. This time I'm going to choose the cut option, which is in this middle box here. I'm going to change it to 0 0.25. Click the check. OK. Then I'm going to add a fillet to it. If you say edge, it'll allow you to pick one edge. If you say loop, it'll allow you to pick an entire loop. Or if you say feature, it'll actually let you pick, just like it's called, the whole feature. And I'm going to make it about 0.0125. Let's make it 0.025. Click the check mark. And you can see I have a nice soft edge there. Not too dramatic. And if I want, I can go back and I can add additional fillets and chamfers and actually create my part. But that's your first parametric part. Very simple. If you want to play around with it, maybe add a hole. The hole can be either a placed feature or a sketched feature based on how you use it. Place a fillet, place a chamfer, place a hole, 
do some real simple stuff just to get used to playing with parametric parts. And remember that our base part was a big square, big rectangle. So it was very easy to determine what it was going to be. You can play with zooming around a little bit here and look at your first part and see how Inventor plays with it and works and gives you what you need. Remember that the largest goes first, second largest next, order of importance. Size does matter in Inventor, so you start out with the largest object and work your way down, hole being the smallest, so I'd place it last. If you do have objects that you need to reuse, you can project those into sketches. You can reuse sketches. We can reuse data over and over again and make it adaptive to that data. And we will get into that once we get into the sketching and more advanced lessons later on in this program.